Good morning, St. John, and welcome to another Theology Thursday. I'm Pastor Hawk, here to continue our walk through Ephesians with you. We've all seen and either you know, laughed at or cried with various caricatures of wedded bliss on TV or movies, haven't we? The bumbling husband and overbearing wife, or the workaholic husband and the frazzled and frustrated wife. We've seen abusive relationships, and perhaps and now and again a positive view of marriage shines through, but far too often, whether it's on the screen or in society in general, we've seen the institution of marriage itself become, on the one hand, sometimes idolized, but other times caricaturized and marginalized. Now, I invite you to pause and turn in your Bibles and, and read Ephesians 5, 22 through 33. While the ultimate theme of that passage is Christ and the Church, it also certainly invites us to think about marriage. And what struck me as I thought about this text and marriage itself is that there's two fundamental reasons why Satan would do his best to attack marriage, both in society at large and among Christians as well. First of all, marriage is a reminder of the goodness of God's original creation, isn't it? Ephesians 5.31 says as much when it quotes Genesis 2.24. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Marriage was given before the fall into sin. So even though sin and the sinfulness of mankind has done its worst to mess it up, the marriage of a man and a woman as husband and wife still stands as a beacon that what God made is good the way God ordered the world is right, and that there can still be blessing in the marital union of husband and wife. It can still be and still is a crucible for learning service and sacrifice and selflessness. It can still be a place where we really learn what love is, not just the mushy feelings that we sometimes have, but the real giving and active and serving love and that love truly is. And so Satan attacks marriage because he doesn't want us to know what love is and he doesn't want us to be reminded about God and his creation. And that also you know, kind of points us to the, the main thrust of Ephesians 5 on marriage, the second reason why Satan attacks it. That's because marriage is meant to be, and by God's grace still often is, a picture of Christ and his church, especially a picture of the true love that Christ gave and still gives, his giving of himself for the church, his nourishing and cherishing the church, his total devotion to the church, his cleansing and purifying and protecting the church from all that comes against it. Yes, marriage points us to the ultimate gift of love in Jesus, gift of his self-serving, his self-giving sacrifice on the cross for us and all humanity. No wonder Satan can't stand it. The cross is the place of his defeat. The cross is the place where Jesus won the victory over him, where he said, Satan, you have no more power, all of Satan's power undone and unraveled in the cross and resurrection of Jesus. So Satan doesn't want us to have any more reminders of it than he could possibly have, and marriage is one of those places. You see, as man and woman are married and united as husband and wife, and as the Holy Spirit works in them to show forth this mystery in their lives, it reminds us that we as the church have been united with Christ in our baptism, made one with him in his death and resurrection. Christ still also nourishes us and cherishes us by his word of scripture, his gift of holy absolution and the forgiveness of our sins, his body and blood in with and under the bread and the wine of the Lord's Supper. What a gift, what a treasure it is to be united to Christ, for the church to be the bride of Christ, sanctified and purified from sin and shame and guilt by the blood of his cross. And so as God's word guides our thinking and our speaking and our doing, well, how might this text, how might Ephesians 5, 22 through 33, this teaching on marriage, guide us in our daily lives? Well, it calls us and invites us to think and speak highly of the gift of marriage, even if we aren't married ourselves. We don't want to play into the hands of the evil one and the, the culture around us by making light of marriage or seeing it just as some sort of burden or throwing our husband or wife under the bus. Neither we can speak about the sacrifice and self-denial it can require of us, but also speak of the love we're learning in it and the joy that comes from it, a deeper joy that comes from the union of marriage. 
We can encourage and pray for husbands and wives and encourage and pray for those who desire to be married, that they would uphold this gift as they enter into it. And as the church, as the body of Christ and the bride of Christ, we're called to trust our Lord and submit to Him on this and on every aspect of faith and life. You see, as we learn what Christian submission to Christ looks like, well, then maybe we can help one another. We can help husbands and wives see the beauty in both aspects of what Ephesians 5 calls for. Not mutual submission, but mutual service, mutual sacrifice, mutual self-giving, that is, mutual love for one another, out of love and reverence for our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this mystery is indeed profound, <laughs> and we'll take a much deeper look into it on Sunday morning during the Bible study hour. Please join us uh, then at 9.30 as we study God's Word together. And may God bless the rest of your week in the Lord as you seek to follow His ways and serve your neighbor in love.